Some fantastic news with regards to Kali Linux and Raspberry Pis. This is from the Kali Linux blog. They talk about Nexmon. Nexmon support. They have now got monitor and injection mode for Raspberry Pis built in Wi-Fi. This is fantastic news because it means that you don't need to use an external wireless adapter to attack Wi-Fi networks. You can simply use the built in Wi-Fi. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the full process, how to download and install Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi. I've tested this on both a Raspberry Pi 5 as well as a Raspberry Pi 4. So on the blog, once again, Nexmon support allows you to use monitor mode, which gives you the ability to sniff packets. You can also use injection. So frame injection allows for custom raw packets to be sent outside of the standard stack ordering. So you can have a look at the Kali website for more information, but now I'm gonna show you how to download and install the software and then attack a Wi-Fi network. As always, this video is for educational purposes only. I have given myself permission to attack my own Wi-Fi network. Only attack Wi-Fi networks that you own or have permission to attack. I wanna thank Proton Pass for sponsoring this video. How do you share passwords with your family, such as your kids or partner? Do you share them via email? Do you share them via DMs? Really bad idea to share passwords in clear text that way. Much better to use a password manager. Proton Pass lets you securely share family streaming logins, Wi-Fi passwords, or work credentials using shared vaults or links that expire, even with people who don't use Proton Pass. And the best part is when you update a password, everyone can securely access the latest version immediately. Proton Pass has built in 2FA, which simplifies accounts that need codes, and you can go passwordless with pass keys. All of your data is encrypted. You also protect it against phishing and key loggers with autofill, and your data automatically syncs across devices and also includes offline desktop access when you're away from Wi-Fi. Great thing about Proton is it's community funded, it's based in Switzerland, and Proton Pass starts at $2.99 a month. Get Proton Pass today for 40% off using my link, proton.me forward slash David Bumble. Proton, privacy by default. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software, and I'm going to download the Raspberry Pi imager. So. In my example, I'm using Windows. I often get complaints when I use Windows for these demonstrations. The only reason I'm using Windows is that most people use a Windows computer. So I'm gonna download the software for Windows and save it to my hard drive. Okay, software has downloaded. So I'll double click on the executable. I'll say yes to allow the software to make changes to my computer. I'm gonna use English for this installation. So I'm gonna click okay. We told, welcome to the Raspberry Pi image uh, setup wizard. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna agree to the agreement. Obviously you should read this and make sure that you're happy with the agreement and then click, I accept the agreement. I'm basically gonna use the defaults here. So default destination folder. I'll create a desktop shortcut and click next. And as you can see, the software is now being installed and I'm gonna launch it by clicking finish. So software is ready to go. First thing you need to do is choose the right device. So in this example, I've got a Raspberry Pi 5. So I'm gonna select Raspberry Pi 5. The operating system that I'm gonna choose is custom. And here you need to select Kali Linux. So you need to go to Kali.org, click download, and we are going to download ARM software. So click on ARM. And in my example, I'm gonna download the 64-bit version of the software because I'm using a Raspberry Pi 5. So I'll click on that and click save to save it to my computer. Now in this example, I'm connected to Starlink. It says 54 minutes to download. It's very slow at the moment. I have, however, previously downloaded the software. So I'm gonna select that software and click open. So basically all you need to do is wait for your software to download and then select it in the operating system option here. You need to choose your storage. So on the Kali Linux Raspberry Pi documentation, you can see they still need to update their documentation because this is no longer true. It is actually now supported. But the part I wanna point out is that you need to use a micro SD card with at least 16 gig of capacity. So in my example, I've got an SD card, it's 64 gig in size, bit of overkill, but that's what I'll use here. I'll insert that into my computer. So now when I choose storage, I can select that SD card and click next. Now you can customize the operating system. 
By default, the username is Kali Kali. You could change that to something else. You could set the host name. You could configure a wireless network. Under services, you could decide to enable SSH as an example. Under options, play sound when finished, eject media when finished, enable telemetry, I'm gonna disable that. So set the various options and click save. And then say, would you like to apply customization options? Yes. And then we told that all existing data on the SD card will be erased. Are you sure you wanna do that? I am, so I'm gonna click yes. And now you can see that it's writing the operating system to the card. So obviously this is gonna take a while, so I'll just speed up the video at this point. Okay, so we told that the image has been written to the SD card, we can remove it, so I'm gonna click okay. And now I can simply take the SD card out and I'll put it into the Raspberry Pi. I actually already have an SD card in there. So I'll slot this new one in that has Kali running on it. All I need to do now is plug in the keyboard and mouse and then I can start up the Raspberry Pi. What I have done here is I am connecting the video output to OBS on my laptop so that I can see what's going on. Okay, so the last thing to do is plug in the power. And as you can see there, the Raspberry Pi is now booting up. It's gone green, so that's a good sign. And there you go, you can see the Raspberry Pi is booting up. Now it's complaining about the network. So what I'll do actually is I'll connect the ethernet adapter at this point. So what I'll do is connect the Raspberry Pi's ethernet to Starlink so that I can update the firmware, etc. I'm not gonna use the Wi-Fi adapter on the Raspberry Pi to connect to my network. I'm gonna use that to attack this Wi-Fi router. Okay, and there you go. I can log in with my username and password. So in this example, it's Kali and Kali. And there you go, I've logged in and you can now see the Kali desktop. So in this example, once again, I am using the Raspberry Pi to attack a Wi-Fi network that I own. I have given myself permission to attack this Wi-Fi network. So that's the network that I'm gonna attack. All I need to do now is open up a terminal. And if I type ifconfig, you can see that it has got an IP address. This is the ethernet adapter that's connected to Starlink. And then I can do a command like sudo apt update to update my references. In your example, you could connect the Raspberry Pi to a Wi-Fi network and then enable monitor mode and injection mode when you wanna attack a Wi-Fi network. I'm simply gonna use the ethernet adapter here for normal network management stuff and then use the Wi-Fi adapter to attack the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so the packages have been updated. I'll clear the screen and I can use a command like sudo Wi-Fi to attack a Wi-Fi network. Now, in this example, it's showing us that it's enabling monitor mode. So monitor mode has now been enabled on this Wi-Fi adapter. So notice here, monitor mode has been enabled. That wasn't possible in the past. This Broadcom internal adapter has now got monitor mode enabled. Now this Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't have an external Wi-Fi adapter connected to it, but monitor mode is enabled because we're using the internal Broadcom Wi-Fi adapter, WLAN zero here. So you can see it's picked up a whole bunch of Wi-Fi networks. I'm gonna press control C here to stop it. The Wi-Fi network that I'm gonna attack in this demonstration is free Wi-Fi. That's got a number of one. So what I did there is press control C and now I can press one to attack the Wi-Fi network. So what it did here is skip some of the Wi-Fi attacks. It's using Pixie Dust. Because I haven't installed the HCX dump tool and the HCX tools, you should really install both of those first. But what I'll do here is press Control C. I wanna continue attacking the network, so I'll go with C. I'm not gonna do a null pin attack. Press C to continue. And I'm not gonna do a WPS attack. Press C to continue. And now it's gonna look for a client that connects to the Wi-Fi network. So what I'll do now is use this phone to connect to that Wi-Fi network, and then hopefully it will capture the handshake. So what I'll do is select that free Wi-Fi network. I need to put in my password, so I'll put in a password here. And as you can see there, very bad password of Spider-Man, and I'll connect. Now you can see here, the WPA handshake was captured. Now, even though it says WPA here, it's actually WPA2. So it's not a trashy Wi-Fi implementation. This is using WPA2, not WPA. As you can see, it's running the attack using the wordless probable text wordlist, and it's worked out that the current key is Spider-Man. So 
for this access point free Wi-Fi, this little router on my desk here. The BSSID is that, encryption is WPA2, even though it says WPA. Captured the handshake, password is Spider-Man. So I have successfully attacked a Wi-Fi network that I own, as always for educational purposes only, using a Raspberry Pi and using the built-in adapter. Now let's fix those two issues that we saw when we ran Wi-Fi. If I run sudo Wi-Fi again, notice we told, and I'll just kill this at this point, notice we told that we need to install the HCX dump tool as well as HCX tools. So what I'll do is copy that and then paste it in and press enter. So it tells us uh, that we need to be root. So we need to type sudo apt install. Software is now installed and the other command that we had to use was this one. So copy, I'll type sudo and paste that in and press enter. Okay, so there you go. So if I type sudo Wi-Fi again and press enter, notice we are seeing other issues here. So I'll break that. We told that there are conflicting processes. Use Wi-Fi with the kill option. So if you ever see problems like this, run Wi-Fi with dash dash kill, and that will kill any conflicting processes like you can see there, and then it will run again. So I'm gonna end this right now. Notice again, we are in monitor mode at this point because it was already set to monitor mode. And we can now attack the Wi-Fi network using different options. So I'll go with one again here. It's trying a pixie dust attack. I'm gonna say no for that. C to continue, null pin, C to continue, WPS pin, C to continue, PMKID capture. I'm gonna break that, C to continue. Now it's doing the capture of the handshake again. So I removed the capture already to make sure that it didn't just give us the answer right away, but it actually does try to connect to the network. So what I'll do is connect to the phone to that network again. And there you go. Notice we were able to capture the handshake again for this Wi-Fi. Again, my local Wi-Fi here, I was able to capture the password with Spider-Man. So Wi-Fi is one tool to use. There are many other tools that can be used to attack Wi-Fi networks. Fantastic to see, however, that you can attack a Wi-Fi network with the built-in Wi-Fi adapter. You don't need an external Wi-Fi adapter. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I want to wish you all the very best.